George, our Georgian friend. Yeah. Uh, thank you. My name is Giro Gandalaki. I'm from Georgian Parliament. I think it's really amazing the extent to which, in a way, the Russian narrative that the NATO enlargement was deliberately intended as simulation of Russia uh, is overall accepted in the mainstream Western political discourse, that this was not really about the free choice of, uh, you know, uh, these nations. Uh, don't you think it's time to convincingly and loudly rebuke this? Uh, uh, rebuke this? But my question also is, uh, and uh, anybody who wants to take it, uh, do you think this crisis would have happened uh, if uh, Georgia and Ukraine, obviously this panel is not about them, but nevertheless were given maps in Bucharest? Thank you. Well, this big difference between Ukraine and Georgia, and we probably did not recognize it that time, uh, but I am absolutely convinced today, as uh, Ambassador Lute mentioned, Georgia in, is in a good way of uh, doing reforms, getting things done, being a good partner. And that's because they were ready to fight with Russians, even knowing that they will lose territories. But they gave the battle. They started to shoot first because the pressure was there. The same pressure was in Ukraine. If the Ukrainian armed forces, 6,000 of them in, in Crimea, would have shot back, that would have been at least, okay, okay, probably they would lost Crimea as well, but the same way. But then <clears throat> it would have given them the possibility of doing their political processes right as it was in Georgia. So I think Georgia did the right thing as Finland did the right thing in 1939 to fight, lost territories, but fight. And that, I think, is important here. And I am sure if you keep that way, one day the NATO will accept you. But you have to build up your own capabilities to defend your country. And I am quoting always Article 3 of NATO Treaty, which tells everybody you have to have, you have, to have armed forces to defend your country. And then you can join alliance and do it together with others. So, and from the new, uh, new threat and uh, NATO, I agree absolutely with uh, Ambassador Lut. Soft uh, developments are exactly a response to the new threats. Cyber, was, what was not an issue 2006, became an issue 2007. It is a new threat we have to deal with. So we should look at the, at the center of excellence of unconventional warfare, I would say. Soft command is that, but perhaps it could be some more uh, there. So I think we do, and we are good, and I think NATO is still able to deal with the threat, even General Neretnik doesn't think that.